So, hot off the press from Microsoft Ignite, November 24, in the Fabric announcements, was open mirroring. Now, we've had mirroring from sources like SQL databases, managed instance, Cosmos DB, so, so on and so forth. But now there's this new functionality called open mirroring, where, well, essentially, you can mirror from any source into Fabric. And then Fabric's going to take care of the inserts, the updates, the deletes, and present that in a queryable format. So from my perspective, that's very, very interesting. So I'm going to be able to just mirror any data in. Now, there are some caveats. The official documentation, which is in actually the data warehousing documentation, it has the open mirroring section. So give it a read. But your data has to be in the Parquet format. And there are some file naming conventions and data conventions within the file that you need to follow to be able to do inserts, updates, and deletes. But I'm going to go through it in a pretty simple demo just to show you how that process works. So I'm going to go into Fabric, and I'm going to create a new item. And I've already favorited it because, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a favorite of mine right now. So I've got mirrored database down here. So I'll call it DE, let's call it uh, SQL mirror source. There'll probably be some jump cuts in this video while things are, are provisioning. What I'll do is, while that's actually provisioning, I'm going to show you some metadata and the data itself that we're going to be using. So if I have a look at the metadata, so for each table, i.e. folder, that you want to push data to, you're going to have to have a metadata.json file. I mean, the documentation said you didn't need this file, but it would error for me when I tried to do it. So. I'm always going to have this file, and I put in what my ID column is. It could be multiple columns, you know, that form a composite key, but I need this metadata file in each of my folders. So I can see in the background that we've had the mirroring database created. Obviously, there's no data. Now, what I'm going to do is, just for the demo purposes, I'm going to use Azure Storage Explorer to upload the metadata and the data as well. So the most important feature in this mirroring process is this landing zone. So this is where you're going to push your Parquet data. All right, so I'm going to copy the URL, and then within Storage Explorer, I'm just going to connect. So let me connect via ADLS Gen 2. And I'll just put the full URL in. I'm not going to do anything fancy with it. I'll call it Fabric Open Mirror. And then Connect. And actually, if I just go back to this Files section, there we go. Got a couple of folders. Uh, I'm not really going to touch anything else, right? Better not, better not touch things. But I'm going to go into this landing zone. This is where we upload our data. Now, when we create a folder, that's going to create a table in the mirroring database automatically. So let me right click, or actually new folder, and I'll say source underscore employees. I'm just using a really basic data for this. Now, I'm going to upload that metadata JSON file that defines what my key column is to enable those updates and, and those deletes. So I'm going to upload that. Let that transfer. And we can see that here. We go back to the mirroring. What I generally tend to see, if I refresh, yep, you might see you know, a, a warning while it's doing the metadata synchronization. But well, there we go. So source employees, the status is running. Obviously, there's no data yet. There's no, you know, no 
rows have been replicated. But actually, what I'll do is I'm going to open up another window and just bring up the T-SQL querying. So I'll query in T-SQL, which is the SQL Analytics endpoint. So anyone familiar with you know Lake House endpoint, this is going to be familiar. We look at DBO, we look at tables. So we've not got anything in here that in in there yet. That's probably because there's no actual data. There's no schema really. All it knows is there's a table called employees. So if we go back to the mirroring, yeah, we can see it's running. So I'm going to upload a file. So the three files that we're working with are going to insert data, update, and delete. So I'll up. I'll just bring up on the screen my three files. Now these are CSV files, just to show you what the data is, but I've actually got three Parquet files that I've created with this data in, because mirroring, open mirroring, at the moment is, or supports Parquet. So we've got my data. It's very basic. It's just an employee ID and an employee location. It's actually from the mirroring documentation itself. Uh, but we've got this row marker. And this is the action that you want the mirroring to do on this data. So zero, as we can see here, that's insert. So I'm telling the mirroring process, well, I just want you to insert this data. The next file I'm going to upload is row marker action one, which is update. So based on the employee ID, which I've defined in my metadata JSON file, it's going to update. So we should see for E0001, Redmond changed to UK. And then lastly, I've got a row marker for my delete operation, which is two. So then we should see when we upload this Parquet file that E0001 is just removed from the mirroring database entirely. So yes, you're going to have to track the actions that you're doing when you write the Parquet data out. So by default, if you don't include row marker, it's just going to insert data. So I think the real power of this open mirroring is the fact that you can tell Fabric what you want to do with this data downstream. So if I go back to Storage Explorer and let's upload the first Parquet file. Whoops. Now, there is a file naming convention that you need to stick to. And this is, if I just go and find the file, essentially, we've got a whole bunch of leading zeros and number one, and then number two, and then number three. Just as a note, if you just upload any old random Parquet file without the naming convention and out of sequence, it won't pick it up. Yeah, it's looking for these files. So again, the process that you use to do this, you're going to have to track what file names you've generated from your source system. So let's add the insert file. So let's upload that. And again, I'm just using Storage Explorer just to interface with the landing zone. Use whatever method you can to you know integrate. So let's go back to the mirroring. Let's refresh that. Yeah. So we get some running with warnings. That's fine. I'm probably going to feed back to uh, Microsoft on some of the uh, things that I find. Sometimes I'm I get this warning running with warnings, and it works fine. So I'm not sure what the warnings are behind the scenes. It could be that it's just simply in progress. So let's just let that run. So it's the initial load. So it's creating the table behind the scenes, and we should see these rows being replicated. So there we go. Okay, we've got status running. We've got rows replicated zero. Let's keep refreshing that. Okay, there we go. So it's reported. We've got three rows replicated. And 
let's go back into the T SQL view. Query in T SQL. Oh, there, there we go. So there's our table. Let's run a SQL query. And there we go. So we've got our data. Okay. Our two columns. It doesn't show us this row marker column because that's just the metadata for the mirroring system itself. Right. So we've got three employees. We've got the same location. So let's upload the update uh, file. Now, just as a consideration, I've separated the inserts, the updates and deletes into separate Parquet files, but you can mix and match this within the file. So you can have inserts, you can have updates, and you can have deletes within the same file itself. So let's upload the second file, which is just one row, and it's going to update the first employee and set the location. So let's see that being uploaded. That's fine. Let's go back to the mirroring and refresh. Okay, there we go. Four rows replicated. So the original three inserts plus the one row for the update. Now let's take a look. Okay, so there we go. We've got employee ID. E0001, and it's been updated to the UK. So we've got update functionality. So let's the last thing we'll do is we'll add the delete file and see if mirroring actually deletes the record. So if you've got a system with soft deletes and maybe you want to push those deletes down into the mirroring, then fine. Yeah, you can do it here. So let's Go back to Storage Explorer. Let's upload the last file and we'll select the file that's got the uh, row to be deleted in. So upload that. And if we go back to the mirroring status, we should see that changing to rows replicated five. So we'll give it a give it a minute or so to catch up with its metadata. And there we go. We get an additional row replicated. We're up to five. Let's go back and query. And that employee's gone. So like I said, go into the mirroring documentation. It's on open or it's under open mirroring. Go through the overview and the tutorial. But yes, you're going to have to manage the process of marking which rows you want to have which actions performed inserting updating deleting like i said my testing showed that i needed that metadata json file regardless of if i wanted to do inserts updates and deletes and you can just mix and match them within the same parquet file but you're going to need to keep your parquet files in sequence in terms of the naming conventions on a per table basis but I think this is the start of something really, really powerful in terms of you know systems that, well, maybe can't write directly into Fabric, can't work with Delta. Parquet format, nice and easy, export to the Parquet file format, and you've got mirroring available within Fabric. So thanks very much. Hope it's been useful and see you soon.